Watch you guys, got another video here for you on how to set up Windows 11 without a Microsoft account. And this is using the new easy method. Now, recently, Microsoft have made a post about they're removing known mechanisms for creating a local account in Windows 11 setup experience, OOBE for short. These mechanisms were used to bypass the Microsoft account setup phase. And it's on these two builds that you see at the bottom of the screen, which is what Microsoft are testing. These are free versions for 25H2 and 24H2 in the dev and beta channel. So I'm going to show you some methods that do work to be able to still bypass the Microsoft account and log into a local account during the Windows 11 setup experience, which is your OOBE uh, phase. And we're going to be using these methods to bypass it on these particular builds that Microsoft are working on. So the local account using bypass NRO through registry configuration. Now you're going to need to do that at this stage here. Now I did try this in my previous video and unfortunately when I rebooted the PC, uh, the network adapter reconnected and this is why it didn't work. I tried it again after I made the video and of course you do need to keep that internet connection disconnected. So what we're going to do is get to this phase first. This is the first method that does still work and we're using those beta and dev builds uh, that Microsoft have used to try and block them. Uh, and so what you're seeing right here is on the actual official dev and beta builds that Microsoft have been working on to block these mechanisms. So when we get to this stage right here, I'll take you through at least six ways you can still bypass and log into a local account on this uh, particular uh, machine. So remember, this is still work in progress from Microsoft and these can also be added uh, to their list of being blocked. Unfortunately, when you create content online, Microsoft will see this content and they will work a way to block these methods. So it's a sort of double-edged sword, really. So it's important once we get to this stage right here that you disconnect from the internet. Now, when I tried this before, I disconnected and of course it reconnected itself. It should look something like this. Oops, you've lost internet connection. That's because we've disconnected the ethernet connection or the Wi-Fi connection. You can push Shift F10 or FN Shift F10 to open up the command prompt window like this. Now we need to type in there Reg Edit like so and press Enter. And this will open up the registry editor. From here, you'll need to navigate to this location right here. Now you can do this inside the command prompt by adding a long command in which adds the actual registry key into this location. But I want to do it manually this way because I think it helps people understand where to put this key in and what it looks like. So we're going to go through and go to this exact location right here. Now, remember, these are on the official uh, beta and dev channel builds that I'm using right here. So these mechanisms would have been stopped. So they won't work on here. So I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people are still making videos on how to bypass it on Windows 11 25H2. And unfortunately, those methods are now blocked and they will be releasing these versions very soon. So you will not be able to use those old methods. These new methods are the only way that you're going to be able to bypass the Microsoft account and create a local account. So you're going to need to right click once we're at that location, create a new D word 32 bit value and create a key and call it bypass NRO. And once we've done that, double click on it and make the value data number one, click OK. And now you can close this window off right here. Again, like I said, you can do that by uh, pasting in the long command saying add registry key, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Next up, you're going to need to type this command here. This will restart the system and it will basically restart the whole process. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. And you can see we're restarting the PC. And once we restart, it's going to boot back up and we'll just continue on. And we should be able to then create a local account. You're going to get this message popping up here. Why did you restart? There's a problem. And uh, there's no problem. It's just Microsoft. They're trying to work out why you're trying to restart. So we're just going to go ahead and click next here. We don't want to plug in any Ethernet cables or any uh, connect to any Wi-Fi at this stage. We want to just leave it off the Internet. So you're going to get back to this splash screen right here. And now we're going to get back to the keyboard uh, layout here in the region. So let's go ahead and say yes here. And we can click our keyboard layout. And we're going to say skip that one right here. And now we should see I don't have internet right down the bottom here. That's the option you'll need to click on 
to be able to continue to create an account as a local account on these new builds. This is Windows 11 24H2 and Windows 11 25H2 with these new builds that will be released very shortly and you will not be able to bypass them using the old methods. So now what you're going to need to do is come down and uncheck these because obviously these are all to do with telemetry. Click accept and go through the installation process and start up your system. I'll quickly speed this process up and there you are, we're at the desktop right here. And if we're going to our settings panel here, and what we can do here is we go up to system and then about, this will tell us the build we're on. And you'll see that the build is the beta or dev build. Soon this build will be rolled out to the general public and what will happen, those old mechanisms that used to work will not work. You can see this version is the 24H2 uh, version. The build is the one that is that being uh, tried on and again this is windows 11 home edition uh, so this would be also the 25 h2 version as well they're doing it on that version so 24 h2 and 25 h2 the builds there's two builds which i talked about that's one of the build numbers for 24 h2 there's another build for 25 h2 and both of those builds will be blocked so that method will still work next is this one right here using javascript function to configure oobe now I found this bypass way back 11 months ago from this guy called the pineapple and you can see he was showing you how to bypass it back then and this is how long ago it was and he didn't get much credit for this but that was as far back as i found it 11 months ago so to use the javascript function to configure oobe what we're going to need to do here is use three keys on our keyboard as a shortcut to open up the developer console that's Control shift j and you should see something looking like this right here. Now you need to type out this command right here. And you can see it's using the ms-cxh colon forward slash forward slash local only. Now you used to be able to run that in command prompt and you'd be able to get the same window popping up. But it doesn't work in command prompt anymore. You have to do it inside the developer console like we're doing right here. And then when you press enter and then you need to escape. So you can see it pop up on the screen. It's still grayed out because we're in developer console right here. And you would then need to press escape on the keyboard and this will bring you back to the window so we can then edit it and put in our username that we want to use. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I'm gonna press escape and there we go. You're back into create a user for this PC. All you need to do right here now is create your user account just like so and click next. And now you can finish off uh, your Windows setup OOB experience right here. And this is going to go ahead and finish this off. Let me just speed this up. And of course, you would just go through and set up Windows the same way you normally do. And when we go back into the settings panel here, and we can see we're on a local account. And if we go back into system and take a look down the bottom, we are using one of those beta or dev channel uh, variants here this is the 24h2 version but there is a 25h2 version as well if you use the other um, operating system build number so either way it'll work on both of those these are the ones that are having the mechanism blocked on them so these two methods do work and there is other methods you can do and we'll go through those in this video as well so let's move on to method number three here and this one is always going to work. I don't think Microsoft will be able to physically stop this method. Unfortunately, you will need to have Windows 11 Pro or above uh, to be able to use this method. Same thing for Windows 10 Pro and above to be able to use the domain join feature, which is inside uh, Windows. And because this is used for uh, work and schools, it's very unlikely that Microsoft are going to be able to stop this mechanism or remove it from the setup because people in work and schools will need to set up for domain. So this is not going to happen. So set up for personal use is not what we're going to use here. We're going to set up for work and school and we're going to go ahead and click next. You're going to get let's uh, set things up for your work and school and we're going to click domain join right here and you can put in your user account right here and you will then be on a local account. Now, the good thing about this is I don't think Microsoft will be able to ever stop this workaround because obviously 
It's for work and schools, and they use this method quite a lot. Uh, unfortunately, for people that are on Windows 11 Home or Windows 10 Home Editions, that means they would have to upgrade their version to a Pro Edition, which is pretty affordable. You can use uh, cheap sites like I've shown in my videos who sponsor my videos. CD Key Sales will be able to get those keys for you at pretty cheap prices. Let's move on to method number four, which is disabling the online account screens on OOBE. You notice a lot of this is all around OOBE, and that's because people use this features all the time, and Microsoft are going to find it hard to stop this. So let's get ready to do this one right here. When you're at the, is this the right country for you? Press Shift F10 or Function Shift F10 if you're on a laptop to open up the command prompt right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up the registry editor from here. And this will basically be able to edit the registry. Now you can input a add a registry link from the command prompt window if you want to. And this will save you having to type reg edit and go in and add the registry key uh, value yourself. That's if you want to copy and paste those. I'll try and leave those in the video description for you. So you could just copy and paste them if you wanted to do that. But you can go straight into registry editor right here and navigate to that same location, HKey Local Machine Software, Microsoft Windows, current version OOBE which is the out of box experience. And this method is going to be difficult for Microsoft to stop because people need to set up the out of box experience for people that sell PCs and things like that. And it's going to be difficult for them to ever block all of this. So there'll always be one way to be able to gain access to it unless they completely stop the access to command prompt window during the setup process. And that would certainly make things more difficult for people. But again, I can't see them doing that because people do need access to that command prompt at certain points to do certain things. So it just depends on how far they're willing to go. So from here, we've got now to create a new D Word 32 bit value key, and you're going to name it Hide Online Account Screens, just like so on the right hand pane. And once we right click here, go New D Word 32 bit value, just like so. And give it a name of what we just said hide online account screens inside here and once you've got that key typed out we're going to need to edit the value and give it a value of one like so you don't need to be disconnected from the internet for this particular way so we're going to click ok here and then we can now close down the register editor box right here and you guessed it we need to type out that command to restart the pc so we can just type that inside our command prompt window right here, shut down space forward slash R space forward slash T space zero. And once you've done that, the PC will then restart. And once we've restarted the PC, you'll see you'll be able to go straight in and create a local account without using a Microsoft account. So once we get to this stage right here, I'll speed this process up and slow it down right here, you will be able to see we'll be able to sign straight in to a local account and then you could just go through setting up windows exactly how you would normally until you get to the desktop and once you've done that you should be on a local account and this is the method you're going to be using uh, once these uh, new builds are released to the general public now remember there was two build numbers one of those is 24h2 and one of them is a 25h2 version these mechanisms will be stopped on both of those builds and they will be rolled out to the general public. So whether you download a 24H2 version or a 25H2 version, you won't be able to use those old methods anymore. These new methods are the methods you're going to have to use if you want to go straight into a local account. Another question I'll see in my comments of my videos is, can you still use Rufus on these builds to be able to bypass the Microsoft account and go straight into a local account? And the short answer to that is yes, I've tried it, it works. You can just use Rufus to be able to bypass and be able to set up a local account. It's pretty straightforward as you would open it up right here. You would download your ISO file from Microsoft. You would select your ISO file. In this case, we would go to this location right here. You can see that's the ISO with the build number on it. We would select that. And again, what you would do then is choose whether you want GPT or MBR, depending on whether you're on an old system or you're on a brand new computer, it would be GPT for Windows 11. And you would basically just click start. 
And now you can use the Windows user experience. You can go through and check mark what you want. If you want to disable BitLocker, uh, to disable the data collections, get privacy questions, and set up your regional options here, same as the values of this user, and create a local account, and so on. You can go through and do this here. You can use this method also on unsupported hardware as well, so that option still works for those people that have really old hardware that want to continue to use that computer instead of switching to, say, Linux. Now, also another question I see in the comments section about uh, these new ways of blocking, and that was the auto unattended .xml files. They still work. Microsoft will not be able to block these. These are part for business, and it's how you set the PC up. So if you want to go through uh, SysPrep or any of this stuff, they're not going to block any of these methods. These methods will always work, and these will also set up a local account for you, skip all the questions, and do all that good stuff. So if you want to go down this route and set up a uh, auto unattended .xml file. I have made videos on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. You can use sites like this to get all of your uh, .xml files created. And there's plenty of them out there that are still available. They will look something like this. And again, you can use these. And this is basically an answer file, which Windows during the setup phase will talk to and set all these settings for you all, all unattended. And it still works on Windows 11. And it will continue to work for the foreseeable future because I can't see Microsoft blocking this method. So if you're not into all of the faffing around, uh, going into command prompt and you know doing all that sort of stuff, then you can either use the Rufus method or using the auto unattended XML files. All you need to do here is get your uh, Rufus and create your bootable USB flash drive and just drop in your auto unattended XML file into your USB flash drive like this, or you can use it inside the ISO file itself and use Ventoy to boot up and install Windows that way. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll see you on the Discord server or in the next video. Bye for now. <music>